We're getting a lot of questions on how to organize your crates in Serato or Rekordbox Virtual DJ. This came in from Marcus Grant. Was wanting to know if we can share ideas how to organize playlists and crates within our DJ software. I can't speak for everybody, but I can certainly share mine. So first off, as a DJ, it's really important to have your music finely tuned and organized. Crates in themselves is its own art form. And we double down on that daily. We really believe that there's a science in the way that you create crates. Now, as a quick heads up, there are a lot of DJs who primarily use Serato. Put your blinders on. It's not about the DJ software itself. It's about the crate structure. And while I use Pioneer's record box, you can use this on any DJ software in the same fashion with the same level of organization. Let's take a look. Okay, once again, we're inside Pioneer Record Box. We're in the full browser mode. To kind of give you a little familiarity, you're used to seeing it this way. I'm going into export mode and full browser. By the way, the songs are over here, but I don't want to distract you too much. We'll just put them over to the side and focus primarily on the crate structure. So first off, everything is numbered in order of my personal preference. If alphabetized crates by any chance ended up getting out of sorts, it's my hope that doing things numerically down the line will keep my preference order in place. For example, I know that I'm probably gonna do a lot of pop music, so pop stays on top. My secondary is rap, and then there's EDM down the line. And mind you that these are the master genres. I notate them with a hashtag, as well as in all caps. Now that's important. For example, if I'm inside of a crate, Look up in the top right of the screen, hashtag pop. That'll show me all the songs in the pop category, along with their secondary master genre and then their subgenre. And the way I can tell the difference is by the lowercase letters. Look over here on the left hand side, you've got the primary master genres, if you will. They're all in uppercase. I tried to do two master genres per song. We're looking at Soldier Boy's Crank That. That's got a hashtag of pop, rap, and wedding. So two to three genres. And I'm using the genre field to categorize this. More importantly, note that these are in all caps with hashtags for easy searchability. And then it's these lowercase subgenres that I wanted to point out. That's up at the very top here. Look how this accordion unfolds. Subgenres can be very particular. Each DJ has their own taste and style. For example, your definition of trap music could be somebody else's altogether different definition of trap music. So to each his own in the sub genres. Actually, let me tell you where I got the inspiration from. I went to one of my favorite record pools, Club Killers, and they get hit with so many different genres all the time. I wanted to see how the experts did it. And so they've got their master genres up at the top, right? All caps, and then the lowercase. And I thought that was brilliant. Current hip hop, recurrent hip hop, then they've got their sub genres that kind of all break down. And I was like, yeah, cool. Because again, these record pools are getting hit with so many different label offers and they're trying to decipher in mass quantity the sound of each song. They have to have their masters, they have to have their sub genres, you might as well lean on the experts and how they do it. So you'll start to see, as you get back into my crates, a little bit of a inspiration. Bass house with future house, big room with electro house, and down the line. Oh, and by the way, I will be sharing a PDF of my entire crate structure, so don't even worry about it. I got you in a second here. Hold on. Let's go back in. So you got your subgenres at the top. I just grabbed those to go, and then it's down here. You start to see me pull these down into different playlists or crates, if you will. I keep my new pop separate from my pop that's burning out, separate from my pop that's classic tried and true. And I tell you, it used to be for years and years I would do that by hand every single month. Top of the month, I would go and resort the order of these. What I'm doing now is I selfishly created the charts in the Crate Hackers desktop app for this very reason. See how I have pop current gold? Yeah, so I'm just gonna do this track match every time. I'm not dragging and dropping and moving from current to gold. The app does that for me. And that's again one of the reasons why I love the Crate Hackers desktop app. Take a look at something you may have missed. You can see them inside each folder. 
little gear icons. The gear specifically is something I wanted to point out. You see a lot of those, especially inside the subgenre folders. Now, what are these? These, in terms of record box, are intelligent playlists. What I've done is set up an automatic catch-all for any MP3 that is tagged properly. Now, I've already got this rule set up, but I'll replicate what I did earlier. I'm gonna call this one hashtag pop, and then under genre equals hashtag pop, like we used earlier. Now, if I pressed okay, you would see any song that is labeled pop pops up in the intelligent playlist. Now, I don't want to disappoint anybody who has Serato or Virtual DJ. This can be done in your DJ software of choice as well. And this is just how I have mine set up in Pioneer's record box. That was key. I really wanted you to see that before we go any further. It's down here that you see pretty much the same structure. For example, there's a difference between songs I would play that are rap songs, but then there are upbeat club songs that I'd want to keep a distance apart from one another. There's lounge and hookah and background music, but then there's twerk and Baltimore and redrums that I would classify as club. And you start to see that philosophy throughout each crate. I do separate my decades by 50s through the aughts. The tools category, okay. This is for anything that is longer than seven minutes. Again, using an intelligent playlist, I called for long songs to be added to this intelligent playlist. And I simply did that by time, seven minutes or whatever your preference is. Maybe you have those master mixes that are hours long, you can set it for whatever. But if you just have to get something going real quick for long extended periods of time, you can do a bathroom break, intelligent playlist. Oh, this one's kind of cool. All clean lyrics. We have basically told it to try and find anything that was titled clean, and that's helpful. Scratch and battle. Sound check. I don't think I have that one anymore, do I? Oh, it's no longer there. I used to have this drum loop that I'm gonna, at some point, bring back, but it would test the highs, the mids, the lows at a frequency that wasn't too annoying for the people around me. I just wanted to do a sound check. Oh, transition. This one is for songs that are taking you from one BPM to the next. This brings up a good point. I never, and I say rarely mess with the artist and title field. I don't do that because sometimes tag editing or track matching gets thrown off when you rename it. But in the transition world, songs that go from 70 to 100, I, again, of course, have an intelligent playlist to catch them all, but this is the only time I'm ever gonna put these BPMs in front and in parentheses. That way, if I columnize it, I can get to a BPM real quick. So if, for example, I'm in 85, okay, hold on, bop. Bop takes me from 84 to 128, perfect. A quick reference to get you from one tempo to the next. Slam edits are those edits that are starting to become popular in record pools where regardless, you've got a song queued up with no need to beat mix it. I use these sparingly, but if you're trying to get really quick out of, let's say, 128 and you wanna hop down to a 95, you can slam it straight in with no need to beat mix. Also an intelligent playlist. I think that covers it. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments. I can always do another breakout video, but this has been asked of quite a bit and I'm happy to deliver. There you go. That's how I organize my crate structure and please don't let this be the end all be all. Don't get too caught up in the details of it all. I would just advise that you would do your best to have a personal relationship with every song that ever comes into your collection. You polish it up, you give it some good cue points and beat grids, and you put in the proper tags and into the proper crate. The more detail, the more data, the more tags you put into a song, the quicker it's going to be to find it and perform with confidence. As you can tell, I get really passionate about this. This is my full-time job. I'm here to organize music and help you eliminate Serato face once and for all. <laughs> if you really enjoy what you're watching and you wanna see more, listen, I'm devoted to it. Let's do it together. For a seven day free trial of our software, we built this software from the ground up for DJs by DJs. It's yours for free if you hit the link in the comments below. I'm Aaron Trailer and happy hacking.